In today's video, you're going to learn how to turn this image into this using a technique called the double exposure effect on Photoshop. So this is a website called pixels.com and it's a website where you can find a bunch of copyright free images for your projects, for your business, anything that you want and they have millions of images. So I just found this image here and we're going to blend this image with, with all of these scenery, scenery images here to create that effect. So I'm going to go to this image, simply right click and copy the image and I'm going to paste it in to uh, the project. So the first thing I need to do is uh, just cut out that background. So usually what people do is they do it manually by with the cropping tool. So they click on it or all of these edges and they do it all manually. So that will give you uh, some accurate results, but it, it does take a long time. Uh, what I usually use is the quick selection tool. So uh, just under the magic wand tool, if you just click and hold where the magic wand tool is, there's this tool here called the quick selection tool. So if you choose that and you simply just click on the background, you can see it just automatically chooses the background. Now it does get into his face a little bit here, but we can uh, manually uh, adjust that later on. So let's just choose the background and let's choose all of these parts here. Cool. So we just selected the background, but it is going over his face. So let's get rid of all of these parts here. So to do that, you just open up a new layer by clicking on create new layer icon right here. And I'm going to choose the paint bucket tool and see and select a color that I can see clearly on this image. So this isn't a color that we, we're going to use on the end pro on the ending project, but it's just a color that we can use to see what we've cropped out so far. So I'm just going to deselect all of this by hitting control D or command D if you're on a Mac. And I'm going to lower the opacity. So when you lower the opacity, you can see what's gone, uh, what, how we've gone over the faces around here. So we can now just zoom in and we can kind of erase all of these parts here. So I'm just going to choose the eraser tool and I'm just going to erase all of these parts here to get all of those parts back. So these are just some minor adjustments that we need to do to make the crop a bit more ac accurate. So if you can, you can still do this with the cropping tool. Um, with the pen tool, but that will take a little bit more time. I just find that this is a bit more easier and it just takes uh, less time. So let's go in here. Just take out these bits here. So depending on what images that you're using, um, the quick selection tool might work a little bit different to you. But um, I'm not going to be too fussy about these parts here. I'm not going to go into each hair uh, one by one because then they'll just make this video bit too long. Uh, but if you do want to learn how to uh, crop things um, accurately, I've got some videos in the description below, uh, like the Photoshop basics um, video, they'll show you how to do that accurately. So let's go back here. I think most of these regions will get cut out, cut out in the final image anyway, so we don't need to get too um, accurate with this part here. But it looks pretty good, I think. Yeah, so that looks pretty good. So now what I do is I will uh, increase the opacity. So we've got the cropped image that we want and I'm going to hold control or command if you're on a Mac and I'm going to select that red layer right here and that's going to select everything within that red uh, within that layer which is the selection and let's hide that red layer or you can actually even delete that la layer now as well so we've selected the background so uh, what we can either now do is we can either just delete the background or we can hide the background so if you want to delete the background you can just hit delete and it's gone um, but if you actually want to, let me just undo that. Uh, if you actually want to hide the background, what you can do is uh, you can select the, the subject instead of the background. So the way you select the subject now is by clicking select and clicking on inverse. So now just inverse the selection and it just selected everything that wasn't selected before, which is the subject. And now if you just click on the mask tool, it will just hide the background instead of deleting it. But in this case, I just want to delete the background, so I'm just not going to be too fussy about that. So let's just delete the background. So now we're going to find some images of clouds, mountains, sceneries, and we're going to mix all of those images with this image here. So let's go to pixels.com and I just searched up mountains. And you can pick any image from here, but I'm just going to choose this one here. So I think this one looks really nice. So I'm going to click on copy and copy image. So let's go back to Photoshop and I'm just simply just going to uh, paste that in. So it just uh, went into the background behind this guy. So I want it to be in front of this guy. 
So let's uh, put that image on top of the model image. So I'm going to rename these um, uh, layers. So let's just name this model and let's name this one. So to rename um, a layer, all you do is just double click and just type it in. So I'm just going to name this one mountains. And I want this to be a cutout of this model. So I want the outline to be of this model uh, around this image. So to do that, if I hold control and uh, or command if you're on a Mac and you click the model layer, it just selects everything that's within that model layer. So that's the outline of uh, the image that, that I want from this mountain image. So I'm gonna click the mountain images again and I'm gonna click on the mask icon. So what that does is it will just cut out everything uh, in that shape, but it hasn't deleted everything. It's just hidden everything in, in that white shape. So that's the masking tool. So the masking tool, it just simply hides things rather than del deletes things. So in that black parts around you, uh, where you see that box, I'm not sure if you can see that, it's quite small, but the black parts is where, is where everything is hidden and the white parts is where everything is revealed. So if I try to move this image, it just moves the entire image. That's not what I want. So what I want is I want the image to move within this outline. So if you want that, all you do is just click off this little clip icon. There's this little clip icon between the image and the mask box right here. So just click that uh, clip icon off. And now if I try to move this, oops, let me just move that. So you select the image first instead of the box. So you have to select the image. And now if you try to move this, it moves within that outline. So now you have heaps of room to play around with this now. So let, let's just uh, transform. So I'm gonna go Control T to uh, make this bigger or Command T if you're on a Mac and you can flip this over. Let's make it slightly bigger. Let's just make it take up the entire image. And I might leave it somewhere around here. Yeah, then that, that looks pretty good right here. And I'm gonna hit OK. So now what I'm going to do is place play around with some of the eff effects on this layer. So usually I go with this effect here called a screen effect, but you can see uh, which one works best for you. Sometimes this effect also works good as well. It's called linear dodge. It works, um, some effects works better on some um, different images. So let's just choose screen dodge because that's my favorite one here. So right now this is starting to come together, but this edge right here just looks a bit too hard. So we can still see the outline of his hair. So we don't really want to see that. We just want to see some uh, nice looking clouds going over his head right here. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to group these two layers together. So let's just select both of these layers. So if you hold shift and click on all the layers, it just selects all of those layers. And if you click on this little folder icon, it will just group all of those layers together. So if you want to see those layers again, you just click on the group and it will just drop down that folder and you can see all of the layers within that group. So this just, this just makes it easier to edit all of those layers all at once. So I'm gonna choose the group and I'm gonna click on the mask tool. So I'm gonna hide parts of all of the, these kind of rough edges around here. So I'm gonna choose the brush tool and let's choose a black color. So rem remember the black color hides things on the mask tool and the white color reveals things on the mask tool. So let's just choose black and I'm also gonna make the brush quite big. And I'm also gonna make sure that the thickness is at 0%. So now I'm gonna choose the mask um, canvas right here, the mask white box, and let's just delete parts of it here. Let's just get rid of those hard edges. So it looks much better now. So I can see that parts of like this, it's deleted parts of the mountains here and here. So let's just make parts of those uh, reveal again. So I'm gonna choose the white color and I'm gonna make the brush a little bit smaller so I can reach those bits. Let's zoom in and let's uh, make this visible again. So let's choose that. Let's just make all of these bits darker again. So we want all of these bits to be revealed. Let's zoom out. Let's reveal these bits as well. So this doesn't need to be perfectly accurate because we're gonna put some clouds over this anyway. So that looks good. At this point, some people are quite happy with the way this image looks. But if you wanna take it even further, we can also add in some clouds and we can also change the color of this image. So if you wanna learn how to do that, keep watching.
So I'm back here on pexels.com and I just searched up clouds, uh, I just searched up some um, moon photos so we can add in some moons, birds, uh, sunset, anything that we want right into this uh, section right here. So I like this cloud image right here. So let's just take this one and let's add that into the image. So I'm going to copy this image. Let's go into Photoshop and I'm going to paste that in. And I'm going to make sure it's pasted in above the group layer that we created. Let's make this a little bit uh, smaller and let's tilt that a little bit here. Yep, so that looks good. I'm going to hit enter. And for this layer, I'm just going to name it clouds1. And I'm also going to give it um, a, a, a layer effect of multiply. So you can slightly see his face and things like that. So we don't want to see any of these hard edges around here. So let's delete all of that. So we're going to uh, not delete it, but hide it. Uh, we're going to use the mask tool for that. So let's click on the mask tool. And we're going to choose the paintbrush tool. And I'm going to choose a black color to hide things. And I'm also going to make the brush a little bit bigger and make the hardness at 0%. So let's hide all of this here. So we just need to go around those edges. And we can maybe leave the things around the corner, but I'm going to get rid of all of those clouds as well. So that looks pretty good. So if you think you've deleted too many of too much of the clouds, so you can actually get that back by choosing the white color and maybe make the brush a little bit smaller and you can get some of those clouds back. So maybe some details around here, some here bits and bits and pieces around here. So just up to you how you want this to kind of look, but uh, you can just kind of delete a hide and reveal, hide and reveal. Uh, you just, just need to kind of play around with this and make this kind of look a little bit um, just the way that you want. So uh, there's a reason I named this clouds one because we can add even more cloud layers to make this look uh, even better. So we can hide, find some more around here. So maybe something like this see what this would look like and I have no idea if it, if it would look good or not but uh, you'll never know unless you've actually tried it on this so let's name this layer cloud 2 and let's give it a uh, layer name um, layer effect of multiply and I'm going to resize this let's make it a little bit smaller and let's hit OK so now I'm going to click on the mask tool and let's hide some of those layers. I think that looks good. Let's get rid of some of these edges around here. So I think that looks pretty good so far. So don't worry about the, the colors too much because you know the colors aren't really matching. We're gonna fix that later on towards the end of the video with this tool called the selective color tool. So that looks pretty good so far. I just want to see the, the shape of the clouds coming together. So let's try add some maybe like a moon or some birds flying out of it and things like that. So let's go back to pixels.com and I saw this image over here. So this one looks pretty good. It's got some birds flying out of it. So let's click on copy, copy image and I'm going to paste that in and make that a little bit smaller, maybe tilt it hit enter there. So let's just click on multiply again. Yep, so that looks good. And I'm going to click on mask and let's start hiding parts of it here as well. So I don't want any of this here. I want his face to be more revealed. And let's get rid of those edges. Now I don't really want that moon. I want to add the moon in manually with like a better image. So I don't really want that moon there. So now let's reveal parts of it. So Maybe let's reveal bits and pieces around there. Yeah, I think that's starting to come together now. Let's delete these edges, delete some of these edges here. Cool, so now it's really starting to come together. You can see those birds coming out and you can move these birds around a little bit if it doesn't, if you want it to move a little bit there. Yeah, maybe close it to the mountains here. And let's add some Get rid of these here and get so get rid of that moon. Cool. And maybe to reveal a bit more as well. I'm just 
so it'll be a little bit too much so this is what you have to do just have to keep playing around with this until it looks uh, just the right way uh, that you want it to be so that looks pretty good so now what I want is maybe a moon or a sunset coming out of it so let's go back to pixels.com whoops I just opened the software here sorry let's quit that and let's go back to pixels.com and let's go to so I just found these images here so I think I like this one here yeah I think I like this one here so let's choose this one and click on copy and I'm gonna paste that just under the these ones here so let's paste that in and I'm gonna make it smaller so let's see what it looks like maybe this size and I'm gonna click on multiply so it gets rid of that dark give it an effect so it gets rid of that dark background so you can click on linear dodge there's a color dodge so depends on what your image is and what works best for you. So for this one, I think a, a linear dodge or actually lighter color works be best for this one. So we can kind of move this moon around, maybe around here, maybe even make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, I think I like it there. Um, so there's still more things that we can add here and there, but you kind of get the point you just have to kind of keep playing around with this keep adding more details in, add more clouds in there uh, you can get really creative with this add anything you want uh, birds could be planes flying out of it uh, could you could even put in like a city instead of uh, mountains into this so there's so many different options you can do with this effect and the final thing is now you just need to add to make the colors all match so there's too many different colors here now so now uh, you just click the the highest layer at the top and you choose this little uh, circle icon on the bottom right hand corner and I'm going to choose selective color so this uh, this window will pop up right here so under the colors menu there's this option here called neutrals so choose that and when you play around with this graph you can see all the colors starting to match so I'm just going to move this around so now you can see maybe you want a red color or if you don't you can move it further to the right maybe it becomes a blue color so you just need to play around with this and see which color looks best and I'm going to play around with this. Maybe let's try yellowish color. So before the colors were just all over the place. Now you can see it looks like it's, it's just one. It's just one big image. So let's play around with a little bit more. Uh, maybe like a reddish color actually looks pretty good. Yeah, that the colors and the and the clouds actually look really good there as well. So Maybe it's a bit too dark or right there. Yeah, I think I like it right here. So now you can actually increase the contrast and decrease the contrast if you want it as well. So if you click back here and there's this option here called brightness and contrast. So you can play around with this. You can increase the bright brightness and increase the contrast a little bit more if you wanted to and play around with that. And yep, so that looks good there as well. And there's also another option called hue and saturation. So now this also you can also choose the colors a little bit more makes the colors a bit more brighter and so this is up to you if you want to use these final options or not but it's um, I usually use this option just to uh, make the colors stand out a little bit more so that looks pretty good and now let's just say you want this entire thing to be just one color um, what you can do is just choose a layer and let's just say you want the color to be like a yellow yeah like a, a light yellow color so you just paint it all yellow and you can choose this color option in, in, the, in the layer fix so that's the color option and if it's a bit too much you can also lower the opacity a little bit and just uh, that gives it a nice effect so that's how you create this double ex exposure um, exposure effect on Photoshop so I hope you find this video helpful if you have any questions you can comment down below but that's it for this video I'll see you on the next one